Right guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman Studio. Today we've got Tassim in the chair. How are you doing, man? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thanks, mate. I'm very well. So, what's the plan? What are we doing today? Um, kind of been growing this out for like 16 months now. I actually oh, wow. started around about the same time you started growing your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. It. Oh, nice. 16 months. Uh, kind of wanted to see how it grows. So you've not had any maintenance cuts in between? I have. Or? I have only okay. two maintenance cuts. Two. Okay, so, okay. I don't know, I just kind of going tired of it. Oh, okay. So, yeah. you, you, so, okay, so are you tired of the look that it is now, or are you actually tired of having long hair? A bit of both. A bit of both. Okay, okay. Both. So, what is your thoughts today, then? What are you thinking of doing? I, I still want to keep a lot of length. Okay. I just want to kind of off the neck. Okay. Around about to where my jawline right, okay. ends there, and okay. then kind of bring it down to about where my okay. eyeline is in the front. I've got some photos. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, you, yeah, let's have a look. I've got a whole, like, Pinterest board. A few, it's like a... Um, okay. Like a textured flow. Oh, okay. Sort of. Sound, okay. Um, cool. Well, we'll definitely be able to create something out, out of all these for sure. The only the only thing is, you know when you said about your fringe? Yeah. You, We can't cut your fringe that short, essentially. Yeah. Because where your eye line is, if you pull the fringe down, yeah. and all of these haircuts have got still length in them. Now, if I was to cut your hair to here, that would only sit to there on the fringe. Yeah. So you wouldn't have much length on the top at all. So to create any of these looks, it would look really odd. I'd be fine with so, that yeah. so, anyway, yeah. Yeah, you, you'll have to keep the fringe longer. Because if you look at every single yeah. one of these pictures, look at, like, say, this one here. The fringe comes, like, behind the ear. Yeah. Almost. So you've got to think that's got to travel from here to behind the ear. So, for example, on yours, because you obviously hairline's different than everything else. If I was to cut your fringe to behind the ear, it'd be that, you'd be taking that much off. So if you pull that down, it'd be down to here. So it's quite mis it's quite deceiving how long the hair actually still is yeah, because yeah. it's coming backwards. Because because you're pushing the hair back, it's it, you need to keep quite a bit of length in there. Otherwise, you have to balance everywhere else else. And if you don't do that, if you cut your fringe short, it might not really work at all. So I wouldn't base the length on the fringe. I base it on where it sits on the ear and the neck yeah. for this sort of look. All right. But if there's the kind of finish you're looking to go for, we can definitely do that. Like if you want to have a shorter haircut, just because of your neckline and what you want the collar wise, I would probably say to about here. I would probably say just to about where the collar would actually start about here. That's what I would say. But that's still quite short. Just because of how low down your neckline is, you probably want to be keeping to about here if you want to keep length in your hair. To about here. So it falls in line with the neck. So more where the jaw finishes here. Or the chin, should I say. Probably more line with the chin more than the jaw. Because the jaw goes very high up to here. As you come across straight here, it goes right into your hairline. Okay. So that would be extremely short. So I would probably say more, if you want to keep length in here, you'd probably be looking about, maybe leaving about that much at the bottom. Because that way I can get longer as we go up to the top. And then that way you can have that flow and that movement in there. Sounds good with me. Yeah? Yeah. You sure, yeah? Okay. You are prepared to lose length though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, sound. All I've right, been cool. uh, waiting on this. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. cool. So we'll, we'll use that as a kind of loose, a loose idea, but you, to get that sort of flow hairstyle, you yeah. do have to go fairly short. The main thing is that I want a lot more texture in the back. So like a lot more layering, whatever I mean that means, but. Okay, yeah. So I would say, if you want to see like that kind of like, you want to see your hair move about more, don't you? Because at the moment yeah. it's just like one long length and it's not moving. So you want to see a bit more movement sitting through the back. Yeah. So I'd say you probably want to go more for that. Loosely based, we'll, we'll, we'll make them haircuts you got there for your inspiration. We'll try and encourage, yeah. we'll try and incorporate into the top. And there's back and sides of yours. Sound good? All right, cool man. Well, um, lengthwise then, yeah. Let me pick a good length for you, that still works. But we still keep some good length in there for you at the same time. All right, cool man, sweet. Well, let's get the shampooed and conditioned, man, and we'll get started. Right, guys, so we are just shampooed and conditioned to seams here, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to put the shape in, remove the length, and start to build the shape up. So I do this in, I do both in one go, okay? So I start putting texture in and movement, and I start removing length. So that's doing a technique that I always do, which is palm to palm, cut them, right? First of all, you start off with a horseshoe section. Now the horseshoe is the thing that separates the top to the back and sides, but it also starts to allow me to build up the face shape as well. Now, when we were looking at the hairstyles and we were looking at like, you know, when someone brings in an inspiration board, which I mean, your inspiration board was fantastic, mate. So I appreciate you doing that. It really helps us because it's obviously a lot of the time clients can't explain what they want. Again, like we have in that conversation about layers before, it kind of means nothing to us sometimes because it's a layer is everything that we do. So it's nice, that's why imagery is really good because words can be can be taken the wrong way. They can be, you know, you could, your idea, like Tassim's idea of layers could be a completely different understanding of what layers are to me. So that's why photos work so well. And wrap this up to the top like that. Pop a couple of clips in there to keep out the way. And there we go. Now, palm to palm. What you do with palm to palm is you remove length and you over-direct. And that creates longer, shorter, longer. Now, if that doesn't make any sense by me saying it, 
I'll visually uh, demonstrate it. We're looking at the length. Now, I'm, I'm in charge right now. I'm the boss right now, and Seema's kindly given me the reins to do that. So I'm gonna take it to a length that I think works, based on the inspiration that he's given me. And also, don't forget, he did say he doesn't want, he wants it shorter, but he doesn't wanna lose all the length. But I was probably gonna take it to about this length, all the way through, to the back and sides. Because I think that way you're still keeping it sort of collar length, or just a bit over the collar, but it allows me to still maintain some length up here to create that flow and that movement that he wants. We do. Two finger width section, so from the hairline, not the temple, because that's just like a bit of no man's land here. We keep that full. That's the bit which starts to concave and starts to round off the front. Two fingers from here, we take our first section. It usually starts just in front of the ear, most people. And now, see, we've lost the sides under here, so we need to make sure we maintain some length through here. So that's a good length to take it to. Now, pull it out, thinking how much it's gonna come off the back. I'm gonna take about that much off through the sides. One cut straight in there, right? Two fingers again, comes to just behind the ear. I'm bringing everything from that front section into here. I bring it out, I find the guide, which is there, and remove the length. I'm taking a lot of length off. So as we're cutting it, we're cutting it from shorter to longer, essentially. That's what it does, because it gets longer and it travels down. But I'm also pulling bits into the middle. So everything from this bit here is getting drawn into the middle. So there's a slight over direction. So the middle's gonna be shorter and here's gonna be longer. It's a touch shorter, you see? It's just a touch shorter than what it was. So that creates that over direction and that is what creates movement. So we're starting to create a lot more texture in there. So there's the separation coming in. Now, if you look at that, on that side there, right? There's the separation. So when you put product in that and you push that back, that's what we call flow. So flow is a buzzword for separation in the hair. That's what, that's what it is. So you look at that side of the length, it does nothing, absolutely nothing. That side does. And there's still like a medium length in there as well. So there's still a good amount of length. I think I kind of uh, noticed about like 12 months into growing my hair, how actually wavy and curly is. I fully thought my hair was like flat, straight. Oh, did you? Yeah. Is that because it had been short your whole life? Well, up until I was 12, it was just buzz cuts by dad, didn't it? You oh, get really? Those, yeah, wow. Yeah, there's, you just sat in the bathtub. Yeah. Get a four all over, <laughs> next one. And Total then... against health and safety, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, we've, we've, all, we've all had them cuts, mate, for sure. Yeah. And then like, throughout high school, just experimented with all sorts of haircuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had like a top knot at one point. Did you? Yeah. Wow, how did you find that? Oh, I regretted that. Did you? I regretted that. I, it was just really sloppy. I, I don't like getting a haircut that off that frequent. Oh, okay. So like going in, getting the fade again, and then... Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't you have to do so regularly, isn't it, as well? Yeah. Kind of low maintenance in that type of field. Yeah, 100%, yeah, definitely. These haircuts, that you, like this particular haircut you've got now, or you're gonna, you're gonna end up with, is super low maintenance, right? It's like a every three month job, you know what I mean? Because you still keep loads of length in there. There's so much texture and shape in there. You don't need to get cut all the time. You know what I mean? If you were going back once a month to get a cut again, you just end up going shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, so you probably come like, you know, I'd, I'd want to see you again in three months time. So I get a lot of clients coming to me now, probably off the channel because they've got longer hair, right? And what I've noticed is that I don't see them clients very regularly. So I see them probably every three months, like I said, but I'm still fully booked every day. So what that does, as much as a lot of businesses tend to work on like two to three week schedules, so they'll get people coming back every two to three weeks, you lose the chance to build up a, a larger clientele. So when I'm doing like every three month haircuts, I've got to get clients in place of them, in place of you. So for example, I, if I'm not gonna see you now till July, I need to get someone in place of you every month, right? That's why I, get, I need to get it. So the beauty of it, of it is, I find, is that you build a bigger clientele that way. So my, if you look at my actual client client list, I've got about 2,000 clients on there that I see throughout the year. So as a business, I think that's much better than just having 300 clients that I see regularly. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you're building up more people. And I've always found that that works quite well. And I always try and push that to a lot of new barbers who are, who are starting off. Like, don't just try and aim for the kind of two or three week haircuts, like the, you know, getting people back so regularly. Try and get more people in place of them, people coming in, because you build up a better client list. Because a lot of people with longer hair, they do end up like going to hair salons. I know I was- They do, yeah, they do. But I think that's because it's like, it, it's sort of like, 
it's almost ingrained into us that barbers only do short hair, which yeah. doesn't have to be the case at all. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I remember when um, when Carlo started working here, and he come to me two times before he started working here and done some one to one education with me, and that was because he wants to basically l like learn to or, or should we say like brush up in some ways on his longer hair because he'd never really cut long hair because the shop he worked in was mainly short hair and that's fine that's normal that's that's what I, I started off doing that you know what I mean I only learned longer hair as I, as I got older and I got more experience but um, it's good to have because if you want to stay on top of the trends like do you really think skin fades were always trendy no, you, no, you know no. so if you're going to look at a trend longer hair is a trend no no matter what you say long hair is a trend but if you're not learning long hair, how do you stick up with the, at the trend? Because your skin fades are gonna have long hair one day. At some point in their life, they might be maybe slightly behind the trend in some, some areas and whatnot, but at some point, them skin fades are gonna go to number four back in sides. Then, they go to, then they're gonna go to scissor cuts. Now, how are you gonna manage that if you're not gonna keep up with the trend? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when you've got that, that sort of portfolio of being able to cut no matter what length, it makes you an all-round, all-rounder. So then you don't worry anymore. You know what I mean? You can go anywhere in the world and you'll be totally fine doing anything you want. You know what I mean? And I think that's that's why that's why I like the fact that I did that. I mean, at the time, I didn't want to do it. At the time, I was thinking, why am I spending all this money to learn things I'm never going to use? But, you know, like even when I learned to blow dry long hair, I did that as a favour because I, yeah. I was teaching them to do men's hair. So I taught this hair. I went to the salon um, back in the day and then... Um, I, it was my, my mum's hairdresser, I think, or something like that, and they asked me if I could teach them to do clipper work. And I said, okay, yeah, sure. And, um, you know, I didn't think of charging them for it. I just thought I was doing them a favour. And I, they said, do you want to learn anything while you're here? I thought, oh, yeah, let me learn how to blow dry hair because I don't know how to do it. So I learned how to do a, a, a proper blow dry, you know, with the brush. Big, big advocate for learning learning new, 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 new hairstyles and new trendy ways of doing things. Even fading. Fading, the way you fade hair now, is totally different to how you fade when I started totally different look on the haircut. The finish of the fade is completely different to what it was when I started learning to fade. So I've, I've had to adapt in how I fade. My fading wouldn't really look how it does on the photos if I didn't adapt and learn, you know what I mean? So it's, it's interesting. What was uh, what was your first haircut that you gave them? Like what type of haircut was it? My boss got me working on clipper work. So I was just doing clipper cuts because they were easier. They were, they were regular, they were quite frequent. And also a lot of guys just didn't care about yeah, it was just a clipper cut to them. You know what I mean? They could do it themselves. They just like to come to the barbershop. So the pressure was off. You know what I mean? Mm. All the pressure was off me giving them a giving them a really good haircut because it was just clipper work. But what that did was it got me used to holding clippers correctly and working, you know, on, on hair. But it also helped me build up relationships with clients. So it helped me it helped me work with people. Do you know what I mean? So more than just more than it just being about the haircut, what the training was was me dealing with actual real people, not just mannequin heads. By me doing the clipper cuts, I was building up rapport with clients. I was building up interactions with clients, but I was also starting to learn how to manage and work with clippers and head shape. So I started off doing clipper work, and then I'd been watching for a good a good number of months of like scissor work, and then I'd just start incorporating scissors into the clipper cuts as well. So I'd make sure I finish off with, with scissors. So my boss was like, make sure you finish the haircut off with scissors, even if it's two into a one finish the top off with scissors, blend in with the scissors if you can after you've done your clipper work, just get used to yeah. using clipper, uh, using scissor over comb. I guess that must be a serious skill because I, I've tried, I've used like a held machine, one of the clippers before. Oh yeah. The whole vibration of it and then like when you're, it should surely, I mean, I, I couldn't keep that steady if I was a barber, I would just say. There, there is a way to hold them, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, um, for example, if you're if you're doing a clipper cut, you have to hold the, the, the clippers a certain way, right, you know, when you're doing it all over. So, when you're doing the top, I'll show you. So when you're doing the top, you'll see videos of people cutting the top of the hair and they'll be doing this, like that. Yeah. That's really arching, that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. You turn the clipper around, you hold it this way and you go that way. So I've seen people kind of waking up to the front here and they're doing this and they're arching the arm up and they're, yeah, yeah. they're kind of coming up and that's the wrong way to do it. That's, it's not the right posture, it's not the right yeah. position and it doesn't feel right. Whereas if you just turn your hand underneath the clipper and go over, that's how you do the top. Yeah. And then when you're doing the back and sides, then you turn it around and hold it this way. But there's a certain point at the round of the head is where you stop holding it this way and you switch to that way. So even just doing that alone changes the whole haircut. Mm. I, but also the vibration, I guess, doesn't that vibration, like long yeah, term, yeah. long term doesn't like cause that arthritis or anything? 
Uh, maybe in the older clippers. Yeah. In, the, in the very like when I started off, we were all, all our clippers were wired, and they were all magnet driven. So they were quite yeah. Were, the vibrations are quite a lot actually when when I think back. Whereas now they're a lot lighter. The motors are a lot softer as well. The mo a lot of them are all like motor driven and stuff now. So they're not. There's no magnets in there anymore. So that that's a lot better. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you probably get some sort of like um, what was it, what's it called? Like carpal tunnel maybe or something like that. Oh, yeah, carpal it? tunnel, I think, aren't you? Um, I'm sure that was probably a problem back in the day. I'm mm. sure. If there's any older barbers watching, let us know if they if they ever come across any of them problems. But, um, but yeah, carpal tunnel, I think, was a big one. Um, and then another thing of like you know like when do you remember the old um, some of the old workies who worked on the drill on the big you know the big construction drills to get that kind of vibration thing in there. Oh, I don't yeah. know what that's called, and where they get like the vibrations yeah. almost like did they get that off using them like big electric diggers and things like that, you know? Well, probably, but the vibrations of these clippers now are nothing really compared to the old ones. If I could find you an old pair of wall super taper, the wired ones, they are like, the, oh, the vibrations oh, yeah. of them, oh my word, they're, I, they're, yeah, they're, they're that's ridiculous. That's the exact same one I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, that, that's probably what you, yeah, that's probably where you, you notice that one, yeah. These nowadays, though, the, the most is so light, you don't really notice it at all. You can barely feel the vibration, yeah. do you know what I mean? If you put it down, it doesn't vibrate too yeah. much. Just like your phone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. I'm just trimming up these sideburns here. It's a really good, good thing to do for your hairs as well, because around the edges, it doesn't grow as long as everywhere else. So I'm just keeping these nice and short down the bottom here. But I'm not going down to like sort of any skin exposure or nothing like that, because I don't want to draw too much attention away. I want it to still have the same kind of cast the same shadow, and I don't have too much of a contrast. Now, that's where it sits at the bottom. I'll show you in the mirror. So it sits just on, or just below the collar at the very bottom. That's probably as short as I would go. I would probably wouldn't take it much shorter because you won't get the same separation throughout the haircut. Is that right yeah, for you? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Happy, yeah? Cool. So it is quite a lot off, as you can probably see on the floor. There's quite a lot of hair come off there. So we are, we are, we are definitely taking it down a bit. Yeah. All right. I remember, um, I think it was the second a maintenance cut that I had. Oh, yeah. took out a lot of the weight. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, the barber said, like, you need, you need to take out a lot of weight. I was like, what, what does that mean? It was like... Like you, you just feel a lot lighter, and um, he took out a lot of the bulk from the back, and nice. instantly I was like, I feel like ten kg lighter. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> It'd be interesting to weigh yourself after getting a haircut, though, wouldn't it? See if there is actually any weight to there, you know. <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely. It's um, so weight is sort of thickness, essentially, yeah. right? Thickness and a bit of length. So it kind of weight would be would you combine it as removal of length and removal of thickness at the same time? That's what I that's what I class weight as. Uh, I do that with the razor as well. So what I'm doing now as well is I'm doing it with the razor. So I'm taking sections and I'm working from middle to the end and I'm sliding through. Now the reason I do this is because I like the finish it gives. It gives separation. It removes um, the thickness of the hair as well. But also it starts to control direction as well. So I can mix the razor up and I can slide into it from different angles and that will cause the hair to fall different ways, which again just makes the styling of your hair so much easier as well. Because it's all about... Like longer hair has to be styled easy, right? You've got to be able to style this well. Now, that's what I always do. Like also towards the edges, I tend to do a bit of freehand razor because I like the edges to look nice and natural looking as though like we haven't cut this, you know what I mean? Like as though, do you remember that, that old hashtag woke up like this? That's the kind of thing I always like to try to go for, what we call lived in, okay? A lived in finish. So a lived in finish is where the hair looks very natural, even on the edges. And that's what we're going for. So I always do a little bit of freehand just to remove any bits of like longer hair down the bottom just to make it not look like perfectly straight or things like that. I always do that a lot. So I like the finish of a razor. A razor gives a very, like, there's nothing else that can give this finish. Okay, so look at all that, look at that man, at the camera. Look how nice that's looking. It's looking very much like the pictures that um, the scene brought in. Right, so gonna go for that nice sort of flowy finish. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch up the shape group with this haircut, we want the hair to flow and fall nicely. That's what we're going for. We want it to be more almost focused on the back length, because like all the photos in there focus more on the back and the shape, right? So I'm gonna take the top on a slightly different finish today. So because we're gonna be pushing it backwards, I'm wearing it back, I'm gonna cut this triangular. Now I'm gonna do this because with the sides here, we can go very, very straight. So Tassim's head is very square. There's not, there's quite a heavy concave here. So I'm gonna cut this on like a sort of slightly more triangular shape because we've already got the squareness from the head. So I don't need to create a square finish. It's already gonna happen anyway. So when we push this back and expose the, the pixel, lose the head shape, look at it, it's very square. 
So we don't need to cut a square shape into this. So center part all the way down, separate the head into two. From one side through here, and come all the way down. Now we take the section, it's got to come back to the recession. So we take one section just past the recession, recession point and we bring that back in like so. Now on a slightly diagonal section here like this, there's my guide from the bottom here, from my finger. That's my guide, can you see that? Very small, but you'll see it. I'm gonna remove length, I'm gonna create shape. I'm gonna work up into the top, like so. So, that's gonna fall into the sides, not over the sides, into the sides. So as he pushes that back, you're gonna see the shorter hair from the top falling into the sides, creating more flow, creating more separation, okay? You'll see all this when it's dry, but again, a lot of the photos look exactly the same. So there we go. So we've got a guide from the right hand side now and through. And then cut up to the top like that. Same angle. There we go. Guides all around. So that's fallen in now, see? So anything that's got more length in it is the front. So that'll hang down like this on this angle because we've pulled it backwards, we've over-directed it. That's because you want to keep the fullness in this area here. As you can see, I'm working this way around. Let me stay diagonal, like so, guides. And we start to go quite straight because we want to build that length up at the back. Because as you said, a little bit flatter through the back, through here, everyone's is. We want to create a nice square shape at the back. So we come out like that. As you see, even though our angles change, it doesn't matter. We're still getting a connection. Here we go. Just like that. There we go. You know, when you're giving haircuts to people, who've always got different head shapes. Do you have to always like sometimes tell them like, oh, that wouldn't look the same on you as it does in the photos or like? Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's the hardest part of the job, mate. Yeah. Or like having to make that say no. Yeah. You know, because sometimes you do have to say no to the client for what they want, just purely because it won't work, you know? Yeah, that, that is the hardest part I find is, is when people have a style in mind and it just won't work. We've got to, we've got to say no sometimes, you know? Not like, no, we can't do anything. Just no, that particular look won't work on mm -hmm. you, you know? Um, but no, it's, it's, yeah, it, that does happen a lot of the time, like, yeah. Um, it's just then trying to find another style. Or when I always say about getting a mood board together on Pinterest, the reason I say it is because I don't just want one, one image. Because if you've come into the shop with just one image in mind, what ends up happening, if you can't have it, you're instantly disappointed. So if you get a few together, then it allows us to pick out of a few of them to get, you know, to pick a look that you like. So we might see, like, say, for example, like the back of this particular haircut, then we can try and make the front of that particular haircut work. You know what I mean? It gives us options then, more than it just being like one haircut. That's what we've got our heart set on that one look. Mm. Oh, you know, God, I can't get it done. So then what? We're back to the square one again then, aren't we? You know what I mean? We're back to the drawing board again. Whereas if you get a mood board, it allows us to see exactly where you're thinking of like loads of different lengths or looks, you know what I mean? It gives us that opportunity to do that. But do you, I guess as a barber, do you like see people be like, he would suit that haircut yeah, or yeah. he shouldn't be doing that with his hair or yeah. I bet I could do this and then he'd look, obviously elevate their look, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But again, like I always say to people, always like, I don't pick, pick, I don't pick haircuts for people, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Like a lot of clients will come in and go, I'm just coming to you because you're the expert, I'm going to let you do it. And I'm like, no, that's not how it works, man. Because I was thinking that as well. I think like, do I ask him like, what, what does he think I should do? Uh, you can ask my opinion for sure, 100%, yeah. but it's not, it's not as easy as people think because like people go, you know, you know more than I do. It's like, yeah, I do, but I don't know you. I don't know your hair. I've never met you before. So we've got to try and figure out who you are. So I can't pick a haircut for you when I don't really know who you are. So that's why a consultation has to come in handy. Yeah. It has to be part of what we do because I can't just pick something for somebody I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very, very hard. Um, and some people say like, that's like, no, that some people don't agree with that, but that's the way I kind of work. I, I find it better working with you and getting something that's gonna work for you. Because what happens is you run the risk of, of, of being, of giving what people will call a bad haircut. Because what I like, what I like, you might absolutely hate. Yeah. You know? 
And I don't want to give you something you hate. I want to give you something you're going to love. So I can always advise and consult. That was part of what I think my training is. It's advising and consulting. It's not picking a haircut for somebody. But there are occasions where someone will come in and I'll just look at it and think, God, you'd really suit this look. And it, it does happen, you know what I mean? But then I'd suggest it. I wouldn't just go ahead and do it. I'd make a suggestion. I'd be like, look, I can see something in you that I think looks great. This yeah. would look awesome. I'll explain it to them. I'll say, would you mind if we give it yeah. a go? Then that's completely different than you sitting down going, I don't know what I want you to do. You do it. It's like, if you don't know what you want, I can't just magically think, oh, bear in mind, I've done 10 other clients before you who've all yeah. done the same <laughs> thing. You do run out of the creativity yeah. a little bit. Your brain just goes a bit like, oh, I don't even know where to start on this yeah. one. And that's being honest, you, you do run out of that little bit of creativity sometimes. But at the, at the same time, it's, it's kind of not that, it's not as simple as just like, you do whatever you want. It's about like going to like, it's probably like going to an architect and saying to them, I don't know how I want my house to be, you pick. Yeah, yeah <laughs> You exactly, know, yeah. it's a bit like that. Yeah. It's not as easy to do that. So I'd always suggest coming in with an idea, even just having a basic idea, that would massively, massively help. It's not to try and make my job easier, it's to make your hair could come out better. You know what I mean? Yeah. My job's still hard, I've still gotta cut it, I've still yeah. gotta frame it, I've still gotta do all the texturizing, yeah. all the sections, my job's still hard. I just, it's just, obviously you can't really pick a haircut for somebody sometimes. I don't know, do you guys agree? Does any barbers and hairdressers disagree with me on that one? I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that's the kind of way I, I kind of find works well for me. What factors do you, I guess, consider? Like when you're like, oh, like what does he do for work? Or yeah. like what do how do does he live? Sometimes what do you do for work? If you already got long hair, I don't mean you need to take that into account because you've already got long hair. So whatever yeah. you're doing for work is still being okay with you having longer hair. So yeah. I don't mean you need to ask that question. Um, I try and find out like morning routine. That's a good one. What do you do in the mornings? Like how long would you spend on your hair? Would you blow dry your hair, for example? Would you would you add a hair dryer in any shape or form to the haircut and the finished look? Uh, what products do you use? It's always a good one to know. Um, what made you grow your hair out? What may what what makes you want this haircut? What are the one of the biggest ones is um, well, I always I always find works really well is what are you happy about with your hair right now? You know. Okay. Yeah. And then flip side of that, what is it you don't like about it? So going in with what you're happy with first and what you don't like about it, then you kind of come into the middle ground of, okay, well, he doesn't like this, but he likes this. There we go. And then just elevate that part of it. So uh, one, of, one of the ones I used to use for a while was, um, which I kind of stopped using for some reason. I don't know why. The consultations do change occasionally, you know, with the, with the certain things you're doing. But it was like, what is it like, when clients come in with like no idea of what they want, I would say, okay, so if you were to walk out of here today, with my haircut that I give you, what is it that you wouldn't like to walk out with? That's a good one because yeah. then if you do, one, it's like a little sort of cheat code, that one, a little bit, because if I turn around to you and said, okay, so what would you, if I turn around to you and said, if, if you walked out of, out of here with a mohawk, would you be happy? Yeah, exactly. So you'd be, yeah, no, yeah. I wouldn't. So instantly I'm not gonna do a mohawk. If I, if I said scalp exposure, skin fade, would you be happy? No, okay, well, we're not gonna do clippers like that. So it starts to narrow down what yeah. the person actually wants, you know what I mean? Uh, that's a good way to start. But yeah, just, just take into the consideration just loads of things, like, like sort of just you, your personality as well. Like when you're cutting hair, talking to somebody is really important because you get to know the personality. Now this, I could do a haircut on you that just does not suit your personality <laughs> at all. Because I always feel like your hair is a sort of reflection of you yeah. and your personality. That's why it's so hard for someone to go, do whatever you want, because I don't yeah. know you. So what, I could look at your hair and go, you've got great hair for this look, but it might not match who you are as a person. And I think I, I got enough out of you in our chat this morning that I kind of, you showed me pictures straight away. So that's, I know you're gonna spend time making your hair look like that, because you, you want it to look that way, you know? So that's the whole point of why I, pictures come in handy, because it gets me to get a sense of who you want to look like, who you want to be, in a sense. And then obviously match it up with what you're wearing, your clothing wise, when that saw you when you come in. Um, you know, again, so client walks through the door, just say hello, you know, when the client walks in, that's your next client, say hello. But as you're saying hello, you can look at them. You can you can basically cold read them. And that's what I always do. I always cold read the client when they walk in. I, I don't obviously make it obvious. I'll be like, hey man, how are you doing? You're right, have a seat. See, you know, be with you in five or something like that, you know? Now I'm cold reading them. And what I mean by that is I'm looking at the demeanor I'm looking at the way they walk in, what their mannerisms are like when they say hello to me. Yeah. I'm just reading all these little things into them. So if that client walks in, like say for example you walked in, what you're wearing, the way you wear, you're really friendly when you walked in. I'm not gonna think that you're gonna go for something extreme. 
you didn't strike me as an extreme haircut kind of person. Yeah. That was based on my first ju- judgment of you, in yeah. a sense. And we all judge, we all do, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you had the longer hair, it was all tied up when you came in. Nice, nice little uh, like shearling jacket on, and uh, I think combat, you know, the combat yeah, yeah. yeah. New Balance trainers. Yeah. Like you, you didn't look like you were gonna come in and say, "I want to shave mohawk with a with a pattern in the side." Yeah, yeah. You might have surprised me, but I didn't think that was gonna be you straight away. So I was thinking, okay, so I've cold read that person. You're very quite trendy, quite laid back, quite relaxed look. I feel like your hair is gonna match the relaxed look that you've got going on now. So that was the mm. first thing I thought of when I saw you. Obviously, said hello to you and got your name and stuff, but yeah. that was what I was thinking about your haircut. So you can do that when a client walks in your shop. So if any barber's watching, the client walks in the shop, you can just do a, squ- a quick glance at what they're wearing, how they are, what their demeanor's like. You know, you get some people who kind of walk in like Conor McGregor does, you know, when they just start fucking arm swing. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you get some guys walking in like that and you just know, you just instantly think he's going to want something a bit trendy or he's yeah. going to want something a bit skin fade or, or, yeah. or out there. Because yeah. you judge that person straight away by based on their demeanor. And if you can do that, and then the haircut marries in, you, that's how you can get a better haircut with that person, yeah. by just judging what they're like when they walk in, and then sitting in the chair, then having a conversation with them, that marrying up to your own judgment of them, okay, yeah, they are what I thought they'd be. Yeah. Or, oh, hang on, they're not, nothing like what I thought they'd be. Yeah. Then that way you can start to pick the haircuts that put about match the personality, and that's when the haircut becomes a better haircut than it just being like, oh, that's a great skin fade. Yeah, fantastic, we can all do good skin fades, great. But does the rest of the haircut match the personality of the person? And then that becomes the the best haircut for that person, in my opinion, that is. So we're gonna finish off now. A little bit of but- uh, hair butter, and I'm just gonna dry this in a little touch. So I'm not gonna like try and bring out the curls, I just wanna dry this in a touch to bring out that movement. So just basically working it through my fingers like this, okay? Just twisting it between my fingers like this, okay? Which, which way works better for you? Coming back, I'll probably bring it over slightly to one side a touch, get a bit more volume in there. Which side would you normally push your head to if you're gonna push it, or would you just push it back? Push it back, but a bit to the right, yeah. yeah. A little bit to the right, yeah. To my right, yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of a natural fall just there, right? Bring that back and let that fall in. There we go, that's, that's, that's it, mate. That's all you do. Awesome. So you've got that really like lived in wave separation. I show what it looks like in the mirror though, so you'll get an understanding for it, okay? So now I'm gonna spin you around. I want you to see where that falls to now. So that falls to just on the t-shirt line there. So can you see how different your hair looks from the back? Yeah. You've got a completely different, almost a different texture in your hair, but you've got all that lived in look. So all them pictures you were showing me are basically that finish. Now that all falls in and gives you a nice bit of separation. And that's it. So product-wise, um, serums, uh, creams, um, maybe more intense moisturising lotions, things like that. You don't really need a styling product in this. Like the cut is so heavily done. You just need the product to enhance it. And all you need to do is enhance it by adding that little bit of more heavier texture because your hair is quite dry textured. So if you put more oil-based products in there, it'll just bring it out more for you. And that's yeah. it. So you don't even need to style your hair like that. You just I already, the do it. already use a lot of coconut oil, so. Perfect, yeah. excellent, yeah, yeah, excellent. Things like that are gonna be fantastic for your hair because they're just gonna yeah. bring out the texture that we need. So we don't need to enhance the style anymore because it's already cut in. Yeah. We just need to enhance the texture of your hair and get that a little bit a little bit less dry. And you'll end up with a much more softer flow as well. That's it. Happy? Awesome. Happy, happy. Yeah? Yeah. Brilliant, man. Thank, Thank you very much, I'll say that for you. Suits you so much as well, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Thank that's you. what I'm saying. Look at you, look at what you're wearing. Yeah. It all just goes well. Do you see what I mean? Thank you. So I appreciate that, man. That was a team effort, that man. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks a lot.